Yeah, I know. It's Sunday. We're out here playing with saws. Uh, Robert. Got it. Love it. We gotta go cut some wood with it and send it your way. Clean her up, put stickers on. Nice saw, buddy. This ought to last you a long time. It's a, it's a beautiful saw. This is a 61. This is Hogan's 266. The, if you notice, like, uh, the handlebars are a little taller on the 266 than the 61. The top lid uh, is taller on the 261 than it is, or 266 than it is the 61. But I'll tell you what, they share the same stroke. The cases are very much the same. The gas tanks are the same, but there is differences. Now, both of these saws I put, they've both got 272 top ends. It's, a, it's the right way to go. When you put a 272 top end, you're going to need some more parts, which is recommended anyway. What you're going to do is you're going to use for either one of these the original air horn for the saw, so it fits the cover and the air filter. But you got to get the 272 uh, block that mounts the carburetor, the cylinder, and the gaskets. Make sure they're good ones. Don't do what I just did. We got 10 in. It was supposed to be OEM. Yes, I got them on eBay. I, they don't lie on that. They weren't, they didn't fit right. So both of these saws had the same darn problem. And uh, one I caught, one didn't, uh, Hogan's didn't give me any fits here, but when they got it, it gave them some fits and just couldn't adjust it. And that's one sure sign you got a leak. And, uh, but now we're all straightened out, other than we've had rain for two days straight. And uh, last night it was raining hard all night. And so it's real wet. But we have made arrangements for tomorrow to be able to go somewhere where it's next to a creek bank on good gravel ground cut up some ash. And uh, so we will be cutting with these saws tomorrow on video. Uh, I think it's not going to be, if it's raining a little, we'll just put the camera in a box or some stupid thing. Who knows? I don't like taking this stuff out when it's uh, in the rain. It's not, a, it's not a good idea. Plus, I get wet. It, uh. How y'all doing anyway? Robert, you haven't, I don't think you've heard your saw run yet, actually, have ya? At least I haven't started this on video, I don't think. I don't think so. Well, let's see what she does. God, Robert, that oil, saw oil is better than any of them. I, we haven't had it. We'll start this one up, too. Let's see if it'll do it. Might be jinxing myself. <laughs> much the same build. Uh, deliberately, Robert's isn't quite as hot as this one. Uh, just for one reason, longevity. Uh, I've done enough for Bucking and his son that one doesn't live quite as long as it, most people would like to see. They don't care. They know I'll send them another one right away. Straight away, just do it. And they're looking for the, the juice, you know. Now, Robert, that don't mean your saw ain't pretty warm, because that's, that's strong. We will see tomorrow's video. It's pretty good. I want to tell you something about somebody. Now, you see him in the comments a lot, but let me explain something. A stump jumper down to PA, a couple hours south of me. Logger, you know, he's, he's one of us, you know. He, he belongs here. And, uh... He loves his power saws. Well, you need to go over to Stump Out, check out Stump Jumper videos. It's all one word. Look him up. 
and uh, he was doing a song with a flat top guitar in his kitchen, and he made his own song, and it's, it's a good one. Low Down Corona Blues. Yeah, I liked it. It's in the style of, like, Hank Williams Sr., you know. He, he did. He, you surprised me on that one, buddy. Go check out what he does. You got to see Low Down Corona Blues. It's good job. Good job. I, you'll like it. Especially in today's world. It was a, it was a good thing to do. I don't want to make a long video today, so one of you guys just wave your hand and tell me to shut up when it's time to turn this thing off, and that's what we'll do. But uh, we're hoping that we can get back in the woods, because I really got to get my firewood cut. Um, I got to bring one of my 370s in, the one I ride the most. And just go over it, just a little, you know, it's about an hour's worth of work. And then go through the throes of death to get it started. Now, last year, that started good, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. pretty good. Yeah, it started pretty good last year. So, hopefully this year it does the same thing. That one I did do, let's just call it, some work to. And, uh... It's old 1976 or 7. I forget which one's which. It's got two of them things. Uh, Suzuki RM370. In their day, that was pretty salty bike. In today's world, yeah, I keep trying to up with them pretty good. It does. It. Uh, I like riding it because it's a cushy ride. Nice big, big old banana seat, nice and thick. It's like the comforts of your living room, but not a bike. Yeah. If you had a recliner with handlebars, That'd be what it'd be. It, uh, gentlemen, we've been <laughs> slowed and hold right up on our work that I normally do because of everything going on. So I am spending more time out here. So if you're waiting on your saw, you're probably going to get it quicker than when you were. Uh, so well, that's all good for you guys. And it's good for me. Because I love building saws for you, and uh, they're really, it's relaxing. In most cases, it's relaxing. Uh, so tomorrow, you're going to see this pair of saws run. We're going to do a little work on this pipe. we got to come up with something a little unusual that we want to try and, and uh, get that sent back to British Columbia. Hopefully, they let us cross the border with it. And... Uh, Heck, we might have to meet him above Montana somewhere where there's nobody knows. Say, hey, Bucket, can you take this? <laughs> we'll get it to him somehow. In some way. It'll work. Throw it over the fence. <laughs> yeah, just throw it over the fence. Psh, no, I see nothing. Yeah, we'll get it there. That, uh, I tell you, <laughs> it, we had, uh, growing up around here, it's darn much fun. You know what I used to do as a kid? Four years old, five years old. I got up way early. I loved to go out and sit on the porch and wait for the sun to come up and listen. And you you smell that fresh air and that first ray of sunshine. See, the sun come up at the end of our valley. It's that first ray of sunshine coming up. It went right over your head. And it was beautiful, and boy, you knew when it was getting daylight, the birds be just a-chirping way up the road. You can hear somebody slam a car door, and down the road, somebody start their motor to go to work, and, and uh, that kind of thing. This is the time of year that uh, traditionally you start your uh, plants indoors when you grow. We grow our own plants, and... Uh, you start them indoors now, so if you guys are going to have a little garden, you got to, you want to plant something, you want to do your tomatoes and stuff, better better get them started right now so they'll be big enough come middle of May if you're living in the Northeast. You want to plant them about middle of May. Well, I'd always wait. My grandparents lived right across the way, and uh, I, I was already warned not to wake them up. To let them, when they turn their lights on, then that's okay to go across once you look both ways and cross the street. So I'll be out there 4 o'clock in the morning just waiting. 
Well, you don't really, you know how to read and tell time, but you think nobody else can tell time then. And, uh, well, I tell you what minute I seen my grandparents' lights come on in their freaking uh, dining room, I was beating feet. And, uh, then you got breakfast. Of course, my parents, they'd be sleeping still. They got up about 6.30. But my grandparents got up about 5.30 generally. And, uh, they had exact times things had to happen, you know, because they're old school. You know, uh, like... Monday was take care of everything that needed to be caught up for chores from Sunday because Sunday you only did the light work, just the minimum required to get through Sunday. That was your day of rest. That's the way it was. Tuesday was wash day. Yep. And there was a day of every week that there was chores to be done. They got done that particular day. And uh, it, it was... Nice having that. Well, you also knew, generally, what you was going to have for supper. And it'd be a choice of two or three different things on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Well, once a month, on a Thursday night, uh, they went, my parents, or my grandparents were, uh, had went through, married, you know, trying to raise a family through the Great Depression. And that was rough on them. So you think you can't get toilet papers rough and maybe there's a few things you're missing. Man, I'll tell you what, read up on what some of them people had to do with just a little bit of nothing. My grandfather had it all right because he worked for the railroad and he never lost his job. And uh, uh, it's so, the money wasn't the biggest issue. It was not being able, of course, that was still tight enough, believe me. And uh, it was about having to survive and being able to get what you want. And, of course, they went right out all that into World War II. And, and uh, so, you know, they knew what tough was. So once a month on a Thursday night, you got cornmeal mush. That's what you got. Oh, man. When you're, you're a little kid, you... Nah, you didn't really care for that too good. Just a little milk, a little sugar, that's what she was allowed. Of course, you know, she was the kind of person to say a prayer over every meal. And that, that was back when family sat down at the table together, you know. That was just the way that went. And, uh, but i tell you what I like the next breakfast. Because there ain't nothing better than that leftover cornmeal. She'd put that into a loaf, that cornmeal moss. She'd put that into a, like a loaf pan. And then... She'd take it out of that and slice that. So you had nice little bread-sized squares. She's a bread pan. And uh, she'd fry that. Of course, she got bacon and eggs. And, uh, yeah, bacon came from right there. Eggs came from right out there. And uh, that cornmeal mush fried in that bacon grease because that's the way they did things. Put a little bit of maple syrup over that. Oh, man, that was some kind of good eating. Yes, it was. That was good eating. But uh, like they used to call uh, margarine oleo. Well, that was from, you know, rationing in World War II. The butter and stuff went to the soldiers, military, in, in most cases, unless somebody made their own butter, which my grandmother did do when she had the milk. But they had a product. It was a margarine. It was called oleo. So all the people that went through World War II, you stop and think about this, guys. They called it oleo, didn't they? And uh, I guess the original oleo was kind of pasty whitish color. It wasn't yellow. They didn't have the dyes in it. And for so many years of having good milk and good butter and one thing and another to make some sacrifices, to, uh, they, they, they didn't mind. They just dealt with it. They got ration cards like soap. You know, that was one thing I know. Sugar uh, was rationed, you know. And uh, so they made do, you know. They had either honey or, or made maple syrup or and just made do. And, uh, like, uh, there was one particular spice cake my grandmother, right, used to make. Uh, it really didn't have nothing in it. It, it. it was a depression cake is what it was. And uh, again, looking up some of them old depression recipes... And you'd be surprised how good some of them are.
Okay, I'm going to share something with you. I was going to show you on video. You know I cook, right? Mm, I like cooking. And there's many of you men out there like cooking too. And I bet you there's a bunch of you wives don't mind when they do, do they? You want to make good cornbread? Seriously good cornbread? I'll give you my cornbread recipe. Go get a pen and paper. No, it's over there. Get your pen. Your pen. The other one. Yeah, the one that works. All right. Here's what it is. I'll promise you, I want you to try this. Any of you like good darn cornbread, you let me know in the comments when you made it what you think of this. It's, uh, yeah, you like the kind of cornbread that don't, the minute you, you cut it, it don't just crumble up. And it ain't not out of a box. And it's stupid easy to make. And it's simply wonderful. I'll guarantee everybody eat it. They eat it all. Two cups of flour. I really don't measure like everybody else, but what it is is two cups of flour. One cup of cornmeal. For two rounded teaspoons of your leavening, your, your, your uh, uh, baking powder, and also about two-thirds of a teaspoon of baking soda. Now, modern recipes try to do this, don't salt, no this, no that, and stuff. If you want to make this right, here's what you're going to do. You go ahead and put three teaspoons of salt in that. All I know, you think that's too much salt. That's not. You need it. This, it's the old rule of thumb is is is, is you got to have that salt or it's not going to work right and it don't taste good. Now the last thing you're going to put in that is the uh, three quarters of a cup of sugar. Yeah, that's what you need that sugar and cornmeal. Mm -hmm. So you got two cups of flour, one cup of uh, uh, cornmeal. Then you got two teaspoons rounded of baking powder, about two thirds of a teaspoon of baking soda, and three teaspoons of salt. You mix that together, a third a cup of vegetable oil, canola oil, whatever, and two eggs. And you mix that better as you can. Enough milk to start, so it whips up. You want then to keep adding milk to this a little at a time until it's the consistency of cake batter. Yes, you do. I cook mine in a cast iron pan because it's way better. If you do that, preheat your pan in a 350 oven and uh, spray it with uh, some uh, oil or, or you know, brush it down with oil in the pan. You can use anything you got, loaf dish, anything. You don't have to preheat them. It's just an oil-coated pan, and you bake that at 350 till that's done. That top, it'll rise right up out of that pan, and when you get, you better make sure you got real butter. I'm just telling you the way it is. Get some real butter when you do this. You let me know in the comments. You'll know when it's done. It'll start cracking open on top, and it'll be nice and golden brown everywhere. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. The toothpick test. That works. Stick a toothpick in. Bring it out. If it's still got little crumbs onto it, that means it's not done yet. You remember when your grandma did that? Yeah, we do that, too. But you can do a little tap, a little bounce test. If it holds an imprint, it's not done. If it bounces back up, it's done. That's the other way. You let me know when you try that. And if you liked it, I'll share a few other things I do. I, I, I'm going to warn you, I make a pretty mean biscuit. And it's just as easy as a cornbread. And uh, you'll never buy nothing out of a box again on cornbread if you try that recipe. I'll guarantee. That's what I know. It, uh, Colin, there's anything we need to tell these people. Oh, yeah, we got, uh, we got T-shirts. Yeah, look at the bottom of your screen. If you're on a tablet to the right, you'll see... Uh, that uh, 
that, that we have t-shirts, coffee mugs, uh, hoodies, one thing, another. They're good quality. Five dollars, that money's mine. If you want one, buy it when you can. Today's times, I'm not the least bit concerned. We're going to be putting more up as we, we make the pattern. Teespring is hooked straight to YouTube. It was a great way for us to go. I got no money investment. I ain't got to pack and ship anything. Uh, I don't have to warehouse anything. You get what you want four or five days once you order it. And I ain't even got to look at it. But we have some. They're very good quality. Uh, it was it uh, surprisingly good quality. We've been actually using them for about, what, three, four years for band, band shirts. shirts. Uh, we've used Teespring. We didn't have a clue that they did something on uh, YouTube. But you can go check it out. If you don't see what you want, leave in the comments. I keep saying that, but leave in the comments. Uh, and uh, something you want to see as far as the shirts or gear or whatever, you know, we'll see what we can do. This is a long road, not a short road. We're in it for the long haul. So there you go on that. Bill Block, now I'll tell you, buddy, you're up to something. I know it. I love you, man. Mikey, oh, yeah, how you been, buddy? Mikey. Yo, Mikey. We got so many people. I, I, I. Be days trying to tell everybody I recognize all the time, you know. All you that's been in here on them uh, comments, keep on commenting. That's all I got to say. I love it. Thumbs up helps, but it's not a necessity for me. That's YouTube's thing. YouTube wants to see thumbs up. I want to see you guys. That's all I want. You know, I hope you have a good Sunday. I think we're barbecuing uh, chicken barbecue. someday. Yeah, barbecue. Go. I don't buy chicken halves. I go buy whole chickens and we cut them in two and save some money. And, uh, yeah, I like barbecue chicken halves. Later in summer, or it gets better weather. We'll, we'll do this barbecue together, all of us. We'll think of that. I think that's a good idea. Okay, stay safe, stay warm. Take care of your friends and your neighbors. Take care of yourself and your family first. That's, that's it right there in a nutshell. All of this uh, little problems of the world will pass, and there'll be new problems, and we'll keep facing them day to day. It's not going to change. This is nothing new. Uh, yeah, it slowed us up quite a bit, but we're going to be out here more. You know, I'm going to have Cullen help me now for a little bit. It looks like off and on because it slowed him up too in his work. It is what it is. Okay, goodbye. <laughs>